All right, and so welcome today to AT Office Hours. Our guest today is Krista Sievertson. Thank you, Krista. She's an autism specialist um, for the Duluth Edison Charter Schools. And so just some little tips here. I would ask everyone to mute themselves if they haven't muted themselves yet. And you can do that by hovering over the bottom of the screen there and um, clicking if you don't see anything, if you don't see the toolbar, but then um, just clicking on the on the microphone button to mute yourself for now. You can definitely leave your webcam on. It lets us all see each other if you're comfortable with that and kind of get a little bit more feedback of how things are going across. So um, if you're willing to keep your webcam on, that's, that's great for the rest of us here in the meeting. So um, that would be appreciated. But um, at any point, if you, if you need to, of course, you can unmute yourself to ask any questions when we get to the question and answer section. Why are we doing office hours? Well, the why for, for me and some of the other people, as we talked about it on the Region 3 AT community of practice, was that we wanted to be able to share resources. Um, we are working overtime, all of us right now, during distance learning. And so we thought, like, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. If someone out there is doing something and using a tool or a resource that is going to make our jobs easier, let's go for it and just share those resources. But this is part of adult learning, is thinking about the why. Like, why are you here today? Is it to learn about a tool that's going to make your job easier, a student's life easier? So as you're going through this, kind of think about that why piece. Always also just keep in mind the set framework, thinking about the student, the environments, the tasks, and then we'll be talking about some tools to help those students through those tasks today. Kind of a general way to think about assistive technology. So we will, today our agenda is we'll have a bunch of resources that our um, guest speaker, Chris Sievertson, will be sharing with us. And then we'll have some time for question and answer. We really want to make sure that you get a chance to ask some questions that you might have and get some possible answers. Greg Sumner will share some distance learning wins for us. And then we'll do some brief additional resources and wrap up at the end. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Krista Sievertson, who, as I said, is the Autism Spectrum Disorder Specialist from the Duluth Edison Charter Schools. And so Krista, if you want to share your screen now with us, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much for that introduction, Julie. Um, so I'm not super good at Google Meet. We do Zoom a lot in our district, so bear with me as we go through this, but I think I've got it figured out. Uh, so I'm here today to talk to you about some visual supports and resources for COVID-19 and distance learning. And you know, with my position as the autism specialist for the district, I've really been thinking a lot about our students on the spectrum and the struggles that they have with transition and change. And this is a really big transition and a really big change not only for us as educators, but definitely for our students. So I started right away putting together resources that I thought that our students could use to help kind of understand what's going on. I've linked on this first slide here, just the overall uh, link to my webpage. I've started this quite a few years back just as a place to um, kind of put together all of the information that I have to share with students and staff. And I'll go through what some of the other pieces are, but tonight, today I'm gonna to focus mainly on the COVID-19 and distance learning pieces. All right. So the first page that I started putting together was specific to COVID-19 and coronavirus, kind of what's going on. I really wanted to think about um, our students and the task for them is to really understand what, what's happening and in particular, understand the disease pre prevention pieces. So helping them understand social distancing, hand washing, wearing masks, and those types of things. And because I wanted to make sure it was accessible to our students with autism and with similar disabilities, I used tools like social narratives, visual supports, and video models. So we're gonna take a look at the website. This is a Google site. So at the top here, you've got um, links to all the different pages. Uh, we're already on the COVID-19 page. And I'll just kind of take you through down the left side here. I started out with some resources for families and just some basic ideas for families to reinforce with their students at home. 
Next up, I have some websites. This first one is really great. It's um, from Affirm, and you might be familiar with them from their evidence-based practice modules. But they put together this supporting individuals with autism through uncertain times um, website that has seven different support strategies to support people with autism. And it's just a really great resource. So I wanted to make sure that, that you knew that that's out there. I also added in some links for parents just about talking to kids about the coronavirus and some um, pages that I thought might be helpful as parents are trying to navigate this at home with their students. Down below, I have some visual supports, including social stories about the coronavirus. I can show you an example of one of them here. So I like these. They're pretty simple, pretty basic, but um, go through what's going on and give a little bit more information to our kids. And then I've started adding in some other ones, particularly um, talking about social distancing and seeing people wearing masks since that's happening more and more now, um, because those are things that are a little bit, can be a little bit scary for students sometimes. And I've made some um, social narratives using the Symbolate tool. We'll look into that a little bit more. Our school um, speech language pathologist, Emily Bellamy, made a EET tool yeah, that explains COVID-19. So if you've ever used the expanding expression tool with kids, she's taken um, COVID-19 and broken it down into those categories to help explain it to students. And then we also have a printable coronavirus zine, which I thought was pretty cool. I printed it out for my daughter who's four and a half and she totally got it after we read through it together. And it, the drawings are cool enough for older kids too. And then some more resources, uh, particularly from Boardmaker. They've been putting out hand washing sequences and um, lots of different types of visual supports. Back up to the top on the right hand side of the page, I have some hand washing visuals and I'll click on one of these. Uh, this is one that I actually printed out and cut out the little squares and then re put them in a different order for our school sinks because we have the automatic sink. So I was able to adjust it to fit what it would look like at school. So we had those um, up for the kids while we were still in school and they're there now for the kids who are doing the um, child care at school. Uh, as well as some how long to wash and some links to songs for kids and for older adults or older kids and adults to sing while they're scrubbing to make sure you're scrubbing for 20 seconds at least. Down below that, I have a couple video links. There's two that were put together using the core words. Uh, one of them talks about essential workers and explains why even though we're all supposed to stay home, some people are still going to work. So it'll be helpful for your kids who have essential workers in their household. And then one that explains COVID-19 that's called What's Going On. There's several video models for hand washing and then coughing and sneezing into your sleeves and how germs spread. All right. So the next page that I started putting together after kind of getting all the information out about what, what is going on right now it was about distance learning. And again, just such a huge change for our kids. So their environment has totally changed. They're at home or they're at a school child care. And I wanted to provide some resources for the kids and for their families to help support this transition. In addition, um, the task has changed for our kids. So they're distance learning online through online platforms or maybe through packets. And so this has completely changed what they're used to for school. So the tools that I've used for for myself to present this to the students are visual schedules and symbols, social narratives, and video supports for parents. And I'm also trying to keep in mind the student tools that they're using and the resources that you're using and how, how they're accessing technology. So we can take a look at that page and uh, have this kind of in a similar setup. So down the left-hand side, we have distance learning visuals and schedules at the top. And I started out with it's just some printable distance learning schedule symbols. Since everybody's schedule is a little bit different, I wanted to have something that could be really easily customized. So I just made this available to all of our staff and families so that they could take the overall pieces of our school schedule and, um, and put them in the order that works best for them. 
And then I also made a specific distance learning visual schedule um, that has a checkoff sheet that students can use. I've linked some at-home visual supports from autismlittlelearners.com, as well as a printable schedule from BoardMaker. And then down below, we have some social narratives. This first one up here is a customizable social narrative that's for kids who don't need pictures for comprehension. It's just words. And it was put together by one of our student support specialists, Ashley Peeler. Uh, I have the distance learning social narrative that I made using the Symbolate tool in BoardMaker. So with this tool, you start typing and the symbols pop up above and you're able to go in and edit. I'm gonna show you a little bit more about that. As well as some more social narratives about schools staying closed, expectations during online learning and tips for distance learning. And I really like these ones uh, that were put together by that Autism Little, Little Learners. She's been sharing these on a Facebook page for free and they're just fabulous and have really great visuals for kids. Back up to the top on the right hand side, I've included some specific technical assistance for our families, as well as um, some visual supports about expectations. So we have a distance learning behavior matrix and I've taken that and added a simulated version. I've also made some checklists for students to get, be able to prepare. Uh, one of my favorites, new, new additions, are hand signals for using when you're in online learning. And um, I've did a little research on different offices and um, what they were doing to um, use those for their meetings. And so I thought that this was something really helpful if you can get everybody on board, um, especially if you have students that where you have the whole class needing to be muted all at once, this could be really helpful. And I've also linked some Zoom instructions with visual supports that came from the Autism Level Up website. They go through step-by-step -step how to use Zoom since that's the platform we use the most. Down below, I have some supports for parents, uh, two videos that have some strategies for parents. The first one is put together by the Minnesota Low Incidence Project with five easy strategies for ASD. And then um, this one is put together by a teacher um, who went through and um, just put together her top strategies for um, working with students with autism. There's a link to the free social thinking videos and resources that they have, um, as well as if you're a local in Duluth area, our Courage Kinney um, Adaptive Sports and Rec has started doing some virtual uh, activities online. So there's links to those there as well as even more um, supports, just things to do at home. Autism Games by Tara Bushish is one of our fabulous speech pathologists. Uh, quite a few years ago, she put together this website with games for uh, kids who are developing their communication skills that they can do at home with their parents. All right, so that's the, the two new web pages I've put together. I've also been using several different tools as part of um, putting together these resources that I wanted to quickly share. Um, the board, most board maker is what I use primarily for my visual supports and I've been using the Symbolate symbol editor in my media a little bit more than I have in the past. And I also just have a quick Velcro visual schedule that I really like that doesn't have any pieces to lose. Um, so this first part is the Symbolate tool. If you've never used it before, it's in board maker. Uh, this is the board maker online version. It might look a little bit different if you're using a different version. But it's this little button up here and you just click and drag a box and you can type in a sentence and it automatically pops up the symbols above. This is exactly what it typed when I wrote this, these two sentences. Then you can go in and customize. Like I like to customize and take out a symbol for, the, for some words if it doesn't make sense. Um, or else customize a symbol if I'm talking about me. And this, in this case, I could change it to a female character. So you could use this tool to create social narratives, to adapt books, to create your own printable books. And then I've also linked a tutorial in here if you're interested in using Symbol 8. The other thing I've been using a lot is the Symbol Editor. And to use this, you select an image and then go into the Edit menu and go all the way down to the bottom and click on Edit in Symbol Editor. And then it allows you to do several different things. Um, I've used it the most to like just change the color of something 
or to erase something from an image that I don't want in there. So you can um, use it in quite a few different ways. The um, I've also linked a tutorial down at the end for this one. Um, it's been really nice to be able to go in and make like change the t-shirt to the student's favorite color or things like that just to make it a little bit more um, personalized. So for the symbol editor, you can customize image colors, cut, copy, and paste parts of the images. You can add drawings and you can save your edits to just that activity that you're working on or you can keep them in my media and use them again. So as a little example up at the top here, I changed, changed this woman into me. And so I have my own board maker symbol that I can um, I keep in my media and I can put on, on things if I want to. So the My Media, this is where you can upload your own photos, videos, audio files, and um, anything from the web. I use Snip and Sketch. I use a PC, um, and that's just Windows Shift plus S, and that'll let you um, screen grab anything that's on the on your computer on your screen, and um, and take the take a picture of it, and then you can go in and edit that as well. And then um, you save those images, um, or sorry, that you can. Um, those save in my media and then you can also anything you've edited in symbol editor will save in my media so you can see this is just a little snapshot of some of the things from my media um, i pulled the pbs symbol um, for a visual schedule i made a symbol for zoom and then i adapted a couple for a student whose favorite color is pink and i made sure that matched her hair color and skin color so um, just to do some customizing that way and then finally, I just wanted to share a, a more low tech thing that I've been doing, um, creating some visual schedules for students that do not have any pieces. And this can be really helpful for kids who either like to clear their schedules on their own or like to hide their pieces or um, who if they're at home and you don't want all their pieces to get lost, you want to be able to do their activities, um, it, it keeps it all together. So. Um, Ignore those three little ones on top. I, I took this picture not intending to use it for this presentation. I was just sending it to a teacher. But um, what this is is two laminated pieces of paper sandwiched on top of each other. Uh, the top one has slits cut so that you can pull the tabs over and Velcro, Velcro them on as you go through the schedule. So, uh, and then I've made a couple of those little ones that are on top. Are there, um, or loose pieces in case the schedule changes or they needed to add something different to it. And then I use um, Eileen's Tacket over and over on the back of those. It makes everything into like its own um, post-it note. So um, you can just stick them right on there. But um, that's it. And I I did add a tutorial down here. You'll see some of my buttons on here. I have um, several symbols in the button, in the, um, in the visual, so I just added a, a tutorial to how you can add multiple symbols onto one button in, in BoardMaker. But you could do this with any anything, even just Google. So, um, there's some other resources that are available on my website that you can take a look at um, if you're interested. And then I'm just encourage anybody who is interested in this to join the Minnesota ASD Educators and it's updated for COVID-19, that's the whole title, um, Facebook group. Uh, I've gotten a lot of my resources from there. There's educators from all over the state sharing what they're doing, people asking questions, there's training information, and there's even giveaways. So I definitely encourage you to join that if you haven't already. And that's it for me. If anybody has any questions, I'll stop sharing. And... Awesome. People Thank you so much, Krista. Yeah. I was monitoring the chat window. We had some kind of side things about resources available in Duluth, but really good feedback about those Zoom hand signals. I'd not seen anyone put together a list of those and the visuals that go along with them. I thought that was really cool. So um, yeah, just also, I mean, what a huge range of resources for kids of very different skill levels and abilities and ages. Like, yeah, I that is that is a lovely set of resources. So thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so now we're opening it up for questions and answers. I will continue to monitor the chat window. So if people wanna type in the chat window, I can um, read those aloud for Krista. Otherwise, um, you can feel free to unmute yourself and turn your video on if you didn't mind and ask any questions that you have at this point. 
I'll mute myself while I'm not talking here. So I see a question from Linda about BoardMaker. Is that, yeah, <laughs> it just popped up on my screen. It is a paid program. Um, our district does pay for it. It's, uh, I believe, for the basic membership, which is really all you need to do the things that I've been doing. It's $99 a year, uh, which is pretty affordable for um, most school subscriptions. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's paid. There is a 30-day free trial that you can do if you want to try it out um, in these last few weeks of school that we have. Oh, wondering if parents can use it at home. Um, you know, what I've been doing is been asking parents what supports they need and I've been making them for them and sending them either the PDF or bringing the hard copy to school and having it delivered through our delivery system. Great. And did you see these mess this message from Greg, too, saying that he loved the Courage Kenny virtual options? And it's so great that you put that together. So thank you. And Leanne was asking what the Facebook page was called. Leanne, just so you know, too, there's a um, the copy of the slides has that direct link to it, too. But um, if you want, I can bring that up directly, too, while um, additional questions and answers are going. Through. Yeah, it's MNASD Educators Updated for COVID-19 is the full title. Awesome. And Tammy Childs is the moderator and she's she's great. Great. So any other questions that people have here for Crystal? I'll give it another minute to let people ask some more questions here. There's that information about the about the Facebook group. All right, well, and we'll make sure that we have time for some questions at the very end too, but um, right now, what I would like to do is I will stop presenting and I am going to turn it over to Greg Sumner, who is going to talk about some distance learning wins. Hey, Julie, thanks for having me back. That was amazing, Krista, oh my word. That's outstanding. Um, super excited to look at that stuff later. All right, so it's been an exciting week. I can't believe this is the new normal. Um, getting used to this myself here. Whoops, let me see here, I'm trying to get to full screen. All right, so here we go. This is a weekly, hopefully a weekly show where I am going to, can you hear me? Can you just confirm that you can hear me? And see this okay? We can hear you. We're awesome. not seeing Thanks. your screen yet though, but we can hear you. Right, see, I can't do two things at the same time. All right, so I have to, uh, I have to uh, come back to the uh, the uh, screen and share my screen. I, I skipped the whole part. All right, so as I'm filling time here, trying to figure out a way to see people and present at the same time. So if anybody has got that figured out, please send me an email and I'll follow up on that. I just, oh, people are dying to get that more useful. So anyways, you can see my screen now, is that correct? I think in one second we will see there. Now we're seeing your screen. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Sorry for that time delay here. Just trying to model that we all are struggling with different pieces of technology right now. So any things you guys have to help figure out this tangled in tech, please send them my way. All right, here we go. Weekly update on different distant learning wins. Uh, every week or every episode, hoping to touch about teacher student stories, tangled in tech, ergonomics, and some school-wide wins. Here we go. We've got our first story comes to us from the Northern Lights Academy in Cloquet. We have three superstar paraprofessionals, Mr. Lacey, Mr. Stradioti, and Mr. Davey. The quote, sensory bags, they just help parents better understand or listen to what their child needs to help self-regulate while trying to focus on schoolwork. The students they're working with are elementary students. The task they're trying to teach them is how to better self-regulate and focus on non-preferred tasks. So weekly, they send out fidget bags. These fidget bags have different smells, textures, manipulatives. Every week, a different option. Finds that the parents are really finding them helpful. Nice job. Next story we have here is a high school student extraordinaire, Nicholas Fenefrock. He's down in Barnum High School. Quote, because of this pandemic, we often feel helpless. Making masks for others was one way to feel like we could help. The student, he's a junior in high school. The task, they're distributing COVID-19 masks, you know, just the basic mask you put on your face. Um, the 
he also is learning job skills, patient concentration, patient's concentration, knowing when to start and stop, how to operate a switch and stapler with a switch with his hand and the motor planning to do that. The tools he's using is a switch adaptive scissors and stapler. Um, if you click this link, it'll take you to his project, but this is Nicholas here and this is the stapler and the power link that he is using. Way to go, Nicholas. Outstanding. Outstanding story. I can't believe that. Nice job, Nicholas. All right. Our next segment here is on Tangled in Tech Wins. Some people are using multiple devices, one to look at the screen and one to look at the, uh, the Zoom. Um, some other options, if you notice here, some post-it notes for putting new shortcuts uh, to help you learn how to mute and unmute with a toggle. Uh, Control D is my favorite one nowadays. Facilitator tips. When there's a large meeting, it really helps when the facilitator introduces the members of the team versus saying, all right, everybody introduce themselves. It makes a big difference. Some fun things. One of the funnest things I saw this week was somebody came into a virtual meeting with the theme song on. Way to go. That was a lot of fun to have that guy come in like that. All right, some ergonomic wins. We have a nice stretch break here by Northern Light Special Ed Co-op PT Christy Just Touch this link here for a nice seven minute break. School-wide wins, we have Raleigh Edison. They created a nice school compilation here. If you click that, you could watch that. And check this out, Cloakley Middle School High School PE teachers make a weekly exercise video. This thing is outstanding. They have like basic things you can get at home and they make a video, so weekly videos. Nice job, this is so fun. All right, so every week we're hoping to um, update you with some distance learning wins. Tell me your stories, send them along. And like I said, oops, I meant to take that one part out there. But if, if, if you still can get me a really good story on how to make that work good, that might be redeemable. All right, that's it. Previous episodes are below and the, show notes, the link will be in the show notes. So back to you, Julie. Love it. Beautiful. Thank you, Greg. That's such a nice example of these these silver linings that we get to see when um, we're in these tough times. We want to acknowledge that that's for sure happening, but there are some really cool things happening. So thanks for sharing those. Um, yeah, so that link to that document that Greg was sharing is right there in the show notes. I'll go super quickly. We've got just a couple minutes left. Some really quick additional resources. Infinitech, oop, that link is wrong. It's my infinitech with a C dot org. Um, that will take you to um, Infinitech where you can get a free account. Families can too. But there's one about using Google Slides to create visual supports. And then there are lots of options in the autism category too for um, some additional options. Um, every time I like to say, just focus on one thing. Don't try to think about, oh, I want to incorporate all these 400 things that people were talking about today. If you can do that, awesome. But I know for me, sometimes it's like, maybe if I can just focus on one thing, I'm a lot more likely to actually follow through on that too, and then um, not feel quite so overwhelmed. So if you can walk away and think about just that one thing that might be really helpful for this next upcoming week. And a giant thanks for attending and taking your time. We know everyone's really busy during these times. So thank you for taking a half hour out of your day to meet with us and um, come together to share some resources. A big thank you both to Krista and to Greg for sharing some information with us. Um, really valuable resources from both of you. So thank you so much for that. And a recording of this session will be emailed to you. Feel free to reach out with any questions to my email too there. Yep, sorry, I couldn't monitor the chat window because we haven't figured out how to see both windows at the same time, but I'm now looking at the chat. And yes, next week, same time, I'll be sending out a flyer to the email list again, um, probably in the next couple of days. I think we've got our guest lined up is um, Catherine Hatfield, who is a level three cross categorical teacher um, for the Duluth Public Schools. So hopefully we'll see you again next week. So I'm going to stop recording now, but feel free to hang around if you've got any additional questions or want to share any additional resources.